FV stock, ticker symbol ABBV. Is this the best dividend stock to buy right now? FV is up 13% on the one year chart, which is quite the opposite of the overall market, which is down roughly 14%. But FV stock has come down roughly 7 to 8% most recently, which is quite interesting. On the 28th of October, FV announced quarterly results where they beat on EPS, but missed big time on EPS gap and revenue. For the upcoming earnings on the 9th of February, 13 analysis expect a miss for FV, while only 2 expect a beat. One of the main reasons why people love FV stock is because of the dividends of course. Dividend yield sits at 3.85%, which is pretty high. And they grew the dividends at high rates. So I understand why people love this stock. But does this also mean that Apfi stock is a buy at current prices? Well, in this video I'm going to show you real quickly what Apfi does. The most recent report, the fundamental analysis, dividends, and in the last part I'm giving you my price tag up to see if they are a buy or not. And I think you definitely want to see that part, so make sure to watch until the end. And I'm also very excited to see what you guys think about this stock, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. My name is Thomas and this is Thomas Invest. I'm an investor looking for great stocks at great prices. So what does Apfi do? Apfi is a pharmaceutical company with a strong exposure to immunology and oncology. The firm's top drug is Umira, which loses its pattern very soon. So this might be a risk with Apfi. However, the company has two new top drugs. Skyrisi and Ringvog expect to drive significant long-term growth with 17.5 billion in 2025 and 21 billion in 2027. Combined peak sales of Skyrisi and Ringvog expect to exceed Yumira peak revenue. If we dive in the most recent earnings report, we see that net revenue increased 3.3% in total. Immunology is by far the biggest segment, so that's why I only included this one. Their top drug, Yumira, represents roughly 50% of the total net revenue. However, this drug isn't growing in high digits anymore because of competition. This was their main cash cow of course, so this worries me a bit. However, the new drugs, Skyrisi and Ringvog, both increasing rapidly year over year. Skyrisi at almost 80% year over year and Ringvog at 45% year over year. For the full year outlook, Apfi expects to deliver an EPS of 13.84 to 13.88. Next to that they also increased the dividends, which is also very nice of course. They declared an increase in the company's quarterly dividends cash dividend from 1.44 per share to 1.48 per share, beginning with the dividends payable on February 15, 2023. And now that we know more about this company, it's time to check the fundamentals of this stock. But first, if you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you a lot for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe and in return you receive similar analysis to this one every week. Let's continue by diving into the fundamentals. Epfi is a 270 billion market cap company which makes them one of the larger healthcare companies in the world. PE ratio is at 20 which could indicate that they are fairly valued right now. Later in this video I will show you my 3 price targets for Epfi, so make sure to watch until the end because PE ratio is only telling a small part of the full story here. Revenue is at 57.8 billion and in this graph we see that revenue went up quite a lot in the past couple of years. However, growth starts to slow down a bit, so this is something to keep in mind. Margins are going up and down quite a lot, so this is something that I don't like that much. The good part is that margins are increasing in the short term, so let's see if they can hold their margins at these levels. EPS is going up and down as well, so this is also something to keep your eye on. Price to sales is at 4.7 right now, which is too high in my opinion. It's also increasing quite a lot lately. And it's the same story with the price to book ratio. However, the price to free cash flow is looking quite good below the 20 mark, so this is something that I really like. Analysis expect EPS to decrease quite a lot in the coming years, which kind of surprises me. And it's the same story with the revenue growth. It's expected to stay flat. Return on assets is sitting at 11.7%, which is above my 10% minimum. So this looks very good. And it's the same story with the return on equity. But the most important number, return on invested capital, is sitting at 16.3%, which is really nice. However, it's below the 5-year average, so this is something that I don't like, of course. 
but in the end 16% is still a really good number. Current ratio is at 0.93, which is very nice since it's below the 1.5 mark, what I prefer. Total debt is sitting at 70 billion, which is quite a lot. I prefer companies that can pay down at least a third of the total debt with the total cash position. Right now total cash is sitting at almost 12 billion, so they are not capable of paying down a third of the total debt. So it's very important that free cash flow is growing since this is used to pay down debt but also to buy back shares, pay dividends and a lot of things. And in this graph we see that free cash flow is going up quite nice and steady, so this comforts me a lot. Shares outstanding is also going up quite a lot lately, which is also something that I don't like. And to me it's very important that shares outstanding are decreasing, since it increases your ownership in the company, increases the EPS, lowers the PE ratio and makes it easier to maintain and increase the dividends. And since we're talking about dividends anyway, dividend yield is sitting at 3.85%, which is really nice. This brings in a lot of money. Annual payout is at $5.92 and payout ratio is at only 41%. I prefer 50% or lower, so right now they have roughly 60% left in cash to buy back shares, pay down debt and a lot of things. The 5 year growth rate is at almost 17%, which is really high, and they grew the dividends for 9 years in a row. Overall a great looking scorecard, but does this mean that every stock is a buy? Well, let's check the price targets that I created using the Everything Money software, which is one of the best tools out there. I'm using a low, mid and high assumption to get the three price targets, starting off with revenue growth. For the revenue growth I'm filling in 3, 5 and 7%, since I think they will increase their revenue quite steady, but not at the same pace as they did before. Profit margin I'm filling in 21, 23 and 25% and for the free cash flow margin I'm filling in 36, 37 and 38%. For the PE ratio and the price of free cash flow I'm filling in 16, 17 and 18. Since this is a slow growing company and I don't want to overpay for the growth. My desired annual return is 12.5% since I can get an easy 10% average annual return with owning an ETF. Right now Epfi is at $153. I hit analyze and we do see a few green numbers. We have a low price target of 88 to 152 dollars which is quite a big drop. We have a mid price target of 160 to 186 dollars and we have a high price target of 151 to 229 dollars. My final conclusion on this stock is that I really like the business and most fundamentals look pretty good. They have two new potential top drugs that can bring in a lot of money and replace the top drug Numera. However, not all things look that great at AppFees, so that's something to keep in mind. For me, AppFee is a great dividend growth stock and I will slowly increase my position this year with new shares. But remember to always do your own research and never fully trust on what I or other YouTubers say about a stock. I'm not a financial advisor and this content is just for entertaining purposes only. I hope you liked this video and I did bring some insights of the company to you. I would really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to get notified when I'm posting a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.